In this video, I will talk about data generating processes. The idea differs from a classic understanding of time series modeling, which tries to decompose a time series into a long-term trend, a cycle and an error term. In a previous video, we looked at a time series and we tried to fit a long-term trend. The best way to get into this is to go straight into Starter and start um, simulating. First, we have to tell Starter how big our simulation is. We have to add observations. So here I specify that I set 1000 observations. It might be useful first to use a clear uh, command just to clear any data in memory. We now have on the left hand side observations marked. Of course, nothing is stored at the moment, but we have um, space for 1000 observations. Next, we have to generate a time dimension. We have seen this before. We just use underscore n to count our observations. Then we do a t set t command so starter knows we are working with a time series. And now we have um, a time dimension. Next, we have to provide some initial values. So we could start as follows. We um, call this process p and we just start creating an empty one, so using dot for missing values. Then we replace p with an initial value, say of 10, if the time is equal to equal to 1. So for the first observation, we set this equal to 10. This gives me an initial value. Next, we need some error terms. So this is the stochastic component. I call this simply the error and I use a normal distribution for it's a standard normal distribution. And here we are, we now have an error term. We see that um, it is what you call a white noise process. So um, every um, random realization is independent from any previous random realization. Again, when you go back to stationarity, that's a stationary process, yeah, because the moments are well defined. Next, we build up our um, process in a for loop. So we do a for values command, starting at two because the first one is already defined, going up to 1000. I close the loop. You don't need indentation, but I quite like to do it. I do a replace on my process. I now use an autoregressive process of order one. So put differently, the current realization of this process depends on the previous value and it's linked by the autocorrelation coefficient. I put this at um, 0.8, but you can try different things. And now ML dot P for the lagged value of my process. That's the lag operator. We talked about this in previous videos. And then I throw in the error term and I do this um, if t is equal to equal to i. Yes, that's my index. Again, note I have to use quotation marks. So that will generate um, my process and then I do a line chart and plot the result. It's best to add here a quiet because you don't really want to see the output. This is an autoregressive process of order one with a first order um, autocorrelation coefficient of 0.8. And you see to some extent it's a little bit persistent, but it still looks um, you know, a little bit more like a, a white noise process. Now what happens if we change this coefficient? So for instance, we can go up. We can go up to maybe um, 0.98. And you see it becomes a little bit more persistent, but you would still argue it tends to go back to a long-term equilibrium. Once you go to one, and this is then called the random walk, and we can talk more about this in future sessions, the behavior changes and you get persistence. You see that in, in, in the chart. So then of course you get what you call non-stationary behavior. What happens if you go above that? Um, well, if you go a tiny little bit above it, you get explosive effects and you see that here quite nicely. So over time, it literally explodes in value. If you go to a negative, um, say, 0.9, it will start oscillating quite a bit. If you go um, above um, one in absolute value, say to a minus 1.5 or whatever, you will also get explosion, but it oscillates. I see you in the next one.